I bought this from the original owner and always, always, always ask if they have more video games for sale. I'll show you why in a moment. Now, I don't actively look out for things like this anymore. It's super fun to go out and collect for things like that. It's just not something I do a whole lot anymore. But I do have friends who know I'm looking and a childhood buddy of mine reached out saying, hey, I have a coworker who has one of these. Are you interested? They're going to sell it. And I said, absolutely. And I'll tell you how much I paid for all this later on. And the fact that it came from the original owner, the person who purchased it once upon a time still had it in the box. The games are still in the box. I mean, look, the price sticker is still on there, $99.99. And they bought this at Shopco. You know how I can tell? It still has the Shopco sticker. This is the kind of sticker that they put on larger items at stores. Uh, we did this when I worked at Rite Aid as well. If it doesn't fit into a bag, they put a sticker on there. So when you walk out with it, it shows, oh yeah, it's it, it's already paid for, it's taken care of. They have that sticker there. It was basically just like a big old band of tape. They just ripped off a piece and put it on there. Also interesting that underneath it, it has that little security tab that like makes the alarm go off if you try to walk out with it. I just think it's so fun. I just think it's super cool. Yeah, we'll open this up to see what it looks like on the inside because it's, it's it's all in there. Little rip right there. It's not so bad though. Before we open this up, let's go ahead and open up the games too because the games are all CIB. Now they only had a few of them. They only had four of them. Not counting the Mario Duckin that's included in the action set. Honestly, nothing that really stands out so that, you know, no Little Samson's, no Panic Restaurants. Not even like a Mega Man or a Metroid. See, when I picked this up from the original owner, I think it was just some two-player games that her and her partner could play. That's why I said her. I bought this from a woman. Not that it really matters. I mean, everyone plays video games. Got Championship Bowling up first. A decent video bowling game. Game. Ah, and not to criticize, but how do you put it back in there without having the tab on top? Just cram it in there? Well, I already said there's a manual involved too. Let's go ahead and take it out. Oh, there's something else in here too. First of all, let me carefully put that where it should go. <laughs> oh, okay, so no manual for championship bowling, but that's where they're keeping the manual for Mario Duck Hunt. And a couple of these flyers for Nintendo Power Magazine. They'd always include these in every NES game you bought because it's like, hey, we want you to sign up for our magazine. Give you a little sneak preview there. And this one definitely with the sneak preview because it even gives you like a free map. That's right, this is the kind of maps you can get with Nintendo Power. Even a little tip about Mario 2 right there as well. Isn't that cool? See, this love stuff like that. And the game itself is super clean. Put this manual back with Mario Duck Hunt. Just like that for now. Yeah, Mario Duck Hunt didn't come with a box when you bought the action set. It was just kind of like loose in there with the sleeve in the manual. No box. This I thought was very interesting because the plastic is still around it. They just opened up the plastic to take the game out. And I loved it when people did that. I wish I would have done that with my own games. And although the NES action set came from Shopco, this game came from Fred Meyer. $34.97 is how much they paid for this game. Assuming it wasn't on sale or anything. It's actually not a bad golf game too. Dude, again, why? It's funny because like everything else is so clean and this is like, I don't know, overly critical. <laughs> I shouldn't be. I just shouldn't matter. Okay, so uh, yeah. And again, on the inside of the uh, sleeve there. So the tab was already there. It's like, okay, let's put the game away. And they just kind of crammed it in there. And oh well. I mean, it's their stuff. What do I care? Only well, it's my stuff now. Wait a minute. Again, pretty clean. Look at that. Man alive. Love that. There's that little glare. That glare there. Oof. And again, yeah, these aren't going to bring a whole lot of value. It's just this one does still have the manual. That's good news. Although now that I think about it, I wonder if the championship bowling manual might be in one of the other boxes. I guess we'll find out. Wheel of Fortune, this is the first one. Jeopardy is now available as well. It says Game Tech, but these games were actually developed by Rare. Oh, let's see if the uh, tab... Both tabs, good to go. All right. <laughs> like I said, it shouldn't matter. All right, there you go. Clean copy of Wheel of Fortune. Love that. See, they took care of their stuff. Something that we should all do. There's a lot of things in this one. Manual, cool. Kind of one of the more boring advertisements for Nintendo Power. Oh, but this one has the registration card. That's kind of fun. I've always heard like never fill out the registration cards because it's basically, you're asking them to put you on a mailing list. But I always did because the stuff I got in return, I've gotten free magazines out of it. You know, yeah, they send you advertising and stuff like that when new games came out. It's like, I, I wanted that stuff. I am happy to see this one here, CIB. i oh, guessing it's CIB. I haven't opened it up yet. One of the best soundtracks of any NES game and it happens to be on Pictionary. Tim Fallon, who did the soundtrack for like Silver Surfer, uh, did the soundtrack for this game. No NES game deserves to have such an awesome soundtrack as a board game from LJN. <laughs> But it doesn't make it a redeeming quality. Nice looking game there, if I do say so myself. Ah! I mean, this isn't supposed to be in there, but it's super cool to see. You put these on your VHS tapes and the manual as well. I'm actually going to put this one back in the Pictionary box. That's where I found it. I think it's kind of fun that it's in there. Here's that iconic picture on the back too. Yeah, gotta love that, right? Play these games on the side, please. Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. Zelda, Zelda 2, Kid Icarus. Yeah. I loved the NES Advantage. I does not like the NES Max. You know, actually, hold on. Nope. 
No. All right, I was checking, it doesn't seem to have them, but there's a retail secret from back in the day. Maybe you know this. Again, this sticker doesn't have it, but back in the day, you know, sometimes price stickers would say $34.97, but then it would say like EFT. And you're like, EFT, what does EFT stand for? Well, I just wrote this really quickly, but the, the EFT numbers stood for something. Now this is Pathfinder. They've also used Charleston in the past, but it would basically tell you what they paid for it. So if it said $34.97 and it said EFT, it meant that that store paid for this game for $9.53. And again, there's Pathfinder, uh, we've used Charleston in the past, and there's a couple of others too. I, I just, I love finding those price stickers where it's like, ooh, how much did they buy? No, not that it mattered, you know? Gotta make a profit somehow. Gotta pay the employees, gotta pay for the lights, gotta pay for the rent. Anyway, whatever. Let's look at this game system. Oh, the sound of the squeaky styrofoam. Yeah, it's not, not so squeaky this time. Oh. Uh oh, starting to fall apart a little bit and missing a little chunk right there. Oh my God. Yeah, they're, 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 ca they're cable wrappers. There are two kinds of people in this world. One that wrap their cords around the controller and of course the other ones that kind of, you know, wrap them in among themselves, I guess, or put them somewhere safe with a rubber band. That I don't know. I know a lot of people don't care for this method. It doesn't bother me. It's not how I do it personally, but it's okay. Power RF, couple of controllers, still has the zapper. The zapper still has the plastic on it. It just, it feels a little heavier than I'm used to, I think. Like, I have some other NES systems that don't feel this heavy. Oh, is there a game in it? <gasps> There's not, unfortunately. Just that. I can't emphasize, I wish you could feel the give on this. But so many NES doors, I mean, especially like me, mine was used so much that eventually it got worn off and just broke off. It didn't even break off, it just fell off, you know? <laughs> At least it seemed like it. This one just feels. I honestly don't know if you can hear this with the sound of the refrigerator and stuff in the background, but this, I mean, it just, you can just hear how strong it sounds. A little squeak there. And that feeling, we'll go after Mario Duck Hunt. We'll get that feeling of popping in a game. Oh, dude. The durability and strength, this wasn't used very much. I mean, it looked like some of the games were taken out of the boxes a few times, of course, but they didn't play this to ad nauseum like I did when I was growing up. You can just tell just by feeling that, like you don't have to blow into it. You don't have to use a one-up card. You don't even have to like put it on the very side and then cram it in there and hope it plays or anything to get that. You can just pop it in, push it down. It's gonna work every time. It just feels like it. I'm actually literally going to put this back. And there's a, another piece of styrofoam missing right there as well. So the console CIB, it came with Mario Duck Hunt and the four game CIB. I paid 150 and I'm happy about that. What I'm gonna do with this, I don't know. I don't need another NES. I'll probably just put it up on Whatnot or something. But the fact that it has that little, I mean, this one I actually might keep. And then I'll sell the one I was using. And the games themselves, super cool to see. And here's why you should always ask if they have more video games. Because A, you never know. And when you're already in that selling mood, when you're just like, here's this, you know, take the money or whatever. Thank you for the transaction. I have money in my hand. So I said, do you have any more video games for sale? And that's when she said, unfortunately for the Nintendo stuff, that's all we had. But I have this PlayStation stuff if you're interested. I'm always interested. So in the garage, they just had this box here. They were about to put it up in a yard sale for 75 bucks for all this. Classic PlayStation 2, can't go wrong. A white controller for the PlayStation 2, very cool. Probably the one it came with. This is just one of them. The Logitech Wireless, which I've never used before. I wonder how well it works. And the games it came with was Dark Cloud, Sly 2, Band of Thieves, Jack and Daxter, a classic, and Hurdy Gurdy, which I've kind of heard before, but hadn't actually had a chance to play. So looking forward to checking it out. She wasn't too familiar with PlayStation 2, I could tell, because she's like, well, here's these, but I don't know if these are PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2. And I said, well, these are PlayStation 1, but they will work on a PlayStation 2, which is why they're together. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, Philosopher's Stone, if you're in the UK. Card games, sure, why not? Even them shell shocked. <laughs> PGA Golf Tour 97, okay. Good old Croc, good old Spyro, Year of the Dragon, and the Namco Museum Volume 1 Collection, which is very cool. Even had a memory card with this. This is a PlayStation 1 memory card, which does work in a PlayStation 2. Unfortunately, there was no PlayStation 2 memory card, not the end of the world. I know it goes against all of the other people you watch on YouTube who like get the best deals and the haggling and all that. Sweet lady got me a good deal on the NES. This box of PlayStation stuff, 75 bucks. I gave her 75 bucks. I was happy with that. Oh, I didn't show you too. The PlayStation 2 did come with the cords and everything. Um, but when I plugged it in to make sure it worked, which of course everything worked, I, it's still plugged in over there. <laughs> 
<laughs> I just unplugged it so I could come over here and do this video. And I'm happy to play a little bit of hurdy-gurdy here too, so. You know, nothing wrong with that. The cool thing is once I have like the PlayStation 2 hooked up, then I feel compelled like, oh, now that it's hooked up, I just go on a PlayStation 2 binge and play a bunch of PlayStation 2 games I haven't played in a while. Like I've been meaning to replay Maxima 1 and 2, been meaning to replay Rygar, and this is why you should always ask if they have more video games, because you never know. 